Okay. <laughs> Hopefully this one works this time, guys. The last time my mic was messing up, I guess. Let's see if uh, see if this one works this time. I'm gonna let some people get in here. See if it happens. Hello, Sister Nancy. Can you guys hear me this time? Sister Sylvia? Can you hear me? Last time the mic was covered up, I guess, so my bad. All right. For you that are joining, be prepared because many do not want to hear this. But I will say, guys, brothers and sisters... It's time that we stop being sissies. It's time that we start rising up. Amen? The enemy, like I was saying in the previous video, the enemy is becoming bolder and bolder. He's raising up bold people for his evilness. Yeah, we have Christianity becoming sissies. We have people becoming sissies, brothers and sisters. It is time that we stop being little sissies and it's time that we start acting strong because who is our God? Our God is God Almighty Yahweh, Jehovah. But yet we act like little sissies. We are, we are acting like we serve a little God, but we don't serve a little God. We serve a mighty, awesome, perfect God. So I'm here to tell you, those that are watching, stop being sissies. It's time to rise up and be strong in the Lord. Again, like I said in this last video, uh, just a minute ago, it was a new video that I made. Um, the problem is that we have too many Christians acting like sissies because they are taught love, love, love. God is love. That's all you're supposed to do is love. Oh, love them. We cannot do nothing without somebody saying that we're not loving. But we are to correct people. We are to rebuke the people. We are to teach the people. And we can do it in love, brothers and sisters. But the love that we have is what's going to help us to do it. People, Christians nowadays are becoming too tolerant. They're becoming too tolerant to where they're beginning to look like the world. Amen? And we cannot keep looking like the world. We cannot keep speaking like the world. We got to start acting like the people that God has called us and set us apart to be. Amen? Hello, brother Jadis. Jadis, Jadis. I don't know how. I never knew how to say your name, brother. Sorry if I'm butchering it. They say love. God is love. Love. Okay. I have enough love that I'm going to correct someone when they're wrong. I have enough love that I'd rather hurt you with the truth than to be thrown into hell for not warning you. Amen? And I know some of you guys feel the same way that are watching. I know some of you are with me in this. Um, you know, but like I said, Christianity is raising up too many sissies and it's time that we start becoming strong in the Lord because we worship an awesome God. Look at 1 Corinthians 16 verse 13. I'll give you guys a second to turn to 1 Corinthians 16 13. It says, Be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Amen? It's, that is the ESV version. I love the way that it's translated there. Be watchful. Stand firm in the faith and act like men. Be strong. Act like men. Okay? It's not saying you have to act like a man, but it, the sense that it's talking about is be, be strong, be firm in your mind, be firm in everything that you do. Don't cower. In other words, when he says be like a man, act like a man, it means be be tough, be strong. Amen? Because like I said, too many of us 
are becoming little sissies because all we want to hear is about God is love, God is love and patience, God is this. Yes, God is love, but we also forget that God is wrath. God is a jealous God. God is a God that's going to come. He's not going to come as a little lamb anymore. He's not going to come as an innocent lamb. I mean, he's going to come innocent, uh, guilt free of everything, but he's going to come like a roaring lion. And when he comes, he's going to come with vengeance. He's going to come with fire. He's not going to come as a lamb anymore. He already came as a lamb. But when he comes back, he's going to come back as a lion. Like a lion. Roaring, strong, and with vengeance. Amen? But modern Christianity is raising up people to be sissies, not to offend anyone. They say, if you offend someone, you don't have love, and God is love. No, brothers and sisters. I'd rather offend you with the truth than to have you perish in hell. And I'd rather be offended with the truth because I know when the truth offends me, it's because God is going to work in me. Amen? And if you're offended with anything that I say, God is going to patch you up. He's going to deal with you and He's going to patch you up. He's going to bring restoration to you. Amen? It's just like any wound. It hurts when you pour that alcohol on there. It's going to hurt you. It's going to sting you. But in the end, you're going to be healed. And it's the same thing with God's words. His words are going to cut you to the bone. He's going to cut you to the marrow. But when He does, He's going to restore you. He's going to mend you. He's going to make you whole again. Amen? So again, like I was going to say, we are raising up to be sissies. And that's sad because we need strong people of God to stand up to the heretics. We need people to stand up to the false teachers. Amen? I call out the false teachers. I try to warn people about Joel Osteen, T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, uh, Joyce Myers, Stephen Furtick, uh, Ron, Ron, uh, there's another guy named Ron, I forgot his last name, um, Joseph Prince. I call out these heretics and I warn people about them. And what, what happens? Instead of people saying, oh, praise God, be to God and glory to God for helping us, for helping us see the, who these fakes are. No, instead, I'm like, I get messaged by people who claim to be pastors, people who claim to be preachers, pe people who claim to be evangelists. They message me saying, why do you spend your time seeking after these people? Leave them alone. God will deal with them. Show them love. We're supposed to be love, not causing drama. They are saying that I'm causing drama. They are saying that I'm causing division. They say that I'm causing trouble because I'm calling out the heretics. I'm trying to call out the wolf amongst the sheep. And I'm the one that's attacked. And that's what happens because many pastors and preachers are teaching everybody love. But they don't teach the people to speak the truth, to, to be firm. Amen? God is love, yes. But God is also going. God is also vengeance. He's also wrath. He's also fury. Amen. I will always stand up for the truth of God, and when I hear God's words butchered, when I hear them twisted for someone's benefit, when I hear lies spoken behind the pulpit, I will speak out. I will be like a pit bull, ready to hold on to the people until they, until they know the truth. You know what I mean? But when I do this, people message me. I receive several messages. Oh, brother, why are you seeking out these people? Leave them alone. God knows what to do with them. God's going to sort them out. But you know what? We must expose these false teachers because too many people are being led astray, brothers and sisters. Too many people are being led astray. And yes, that's right, Nancy. They do not preach repentance for sin. Amen. We have now. I only speak out against false preachers if I have all the proof. Believe me, I do research. I listen to the messages, and I follow along with the Bible. And if I hear something wrong, I go to the next message and see if there's anything wrong. And when I find several things wrong with each message. This shows me that these people are not teaching truth, brothers and sisters. Another one that's also uh, 
famous for teaching wrong is Jensen, Jens, Jensen, Jensen, whatever his name is, Franklin. He's always all over Facebook. But listen, we must continue to call out these false preachers, false prophets, false whatever. Paul did it. Jesus even called out the Pharisees for their hypocrisy and for their lies. Paul did it. All the apostles did it. Amen? The apostles were attacked. They were stoned. They were imprisoned. They were, they were mocked by the people. They were hated by the people. Amen? And it still happens today because like I said, instead of somebody saying, thank you brother for showing us the truth, for preaching the truth and showing us that these people are fake, instead they attack me. They say, why are you bothering with these people? Leave them alone. Show them love. We need more people, brothers and sisters. We need more people who's going to stand up for the word of God in his time that we all stand up. And you know what the problem is too? Many people do not want to stand up because they don't read the word of God. Many people do not read the Bible. So they don't know what the truth is. So they will fall for any false preacher, prophet, pastor, whatever. If you don't know the truth of God because you don't read it, then you will fall for anything as truth. And it hurts me, brothers and sisters, to see people to be taught the wrong words. I mean, to be taught wrongly. And they're over there saying, Amen. You don't say, you never say amen unless you are confident and you know the truth that the person is speaking the truth. Then you say amen. Amen is like a, a covenant. You know, it was known as a covenant. When you said amen, it means that you agreed because you know they were teaching the truth. But millions of people are saying amen to Joel Osteen's uh, false teachings, to T.D. Jakes, to Creflo Dollar, Jesse Duplantis, um, Mike Murdoch. All these false teachers, if you go look, many millions and millions are saying amen to false teachings. And so, I hope this will help you guys to understand. It's time to rise up. We need people strong for the Lord. We need you guys to start standing up for the Lord. When you see something wrong, when you hear something wrong in a message, if you can... Message that pastor, preacher, or teacher. Message them first in private. Discuss it with them. If they don't want to listen or they don't respond, then you expose them publicly. Amen? You expose them publicly. Because they're publicly preaching false lies. They're teaching false lies, so you have to expose them publicly. I remember one pastor, um, it was a story I, I read one pastor, he said that during one Sunday morning service, two of his members got into an argument outside the front doors and they were about to do fist fighting and everything. Well, then the word got to him after service. And so the next service, the next weekend, this person, I mean, this pastor called out the two men that were about to fist fight. He called them to the front. He said, you know what? You guys wanted to make a fool of yourself in, in public. You wanted to cause a, a ruckus in public. You wanted to cause all this stupidity. Well, you know what? You caused it in public. So you get up here in the front of everybody and you apologize to each other in public. And you apologize and ask for forgiveness from the congregation for having to see your stupidity, for having to, you, for having to see you act like children. He made them publicly repent. He made them ask for forgiveness to the congregation. If you do something in public that is that is wrong, you deserve to be exposed in public. If I ever do something wrong in public or I teach wrong, I want you guys to hold me accountable. Don't just listen to everything I teach you. Amen. Don't just go along with me for everything that I teach you. I want you guys to always double check what I'm teaching. I want you to cross check me. Amen. Don't just take my word. Don't just take any pastor's word. Don't just take any preacher's word. Always double check what they say. Cross check. Go over and over the message. And if you ever catch me saying something wrong, contact me. Let me know and we can discuss it. 
And, you know, if you catch me or something wrong, I will repent. You know, but I want you guys to always cross check me, double check what I say. I don't want you guys just to follow me just because, you know, because I'm teaching. And that's the problem with a lot of people is that too many people follow blindly. But anyways, guys, this whole message is that we need strong people to stand up. We need people to to speak the truth, no matter if you offend your brother or sister. If it's a if it's uh, if you do it in truth and, you know, I rather like I say, I'd rather offend you with the truth than to just rub your back and say everything's going to be perfect, peachy, fine. You know what I mean? There, like I posted earlier, there's very few pastors, preachers that I listen to. My list is very short. Okay? I want, when I listen to preachers, pastors, evangelists, I want that word to be strong, hard-hitting. I don't want my ears tickled, and I hope you guys don't want your ears tickled either. Amen? But yes, guys. Christianity... We in the Christianity need to become strong. Let's pray to the Lord to give us a backbone like Paul. Give us a backbone like like um, like Stephen. Stephen went out there and he he preached repentance and he was stoned to it. He didn't go back on his words. He stayed strong till his death. He was stoned. He saw it right in his face and he stayed strong. We need people like Stephen. We need people like Paul. We need people like Jesus Christ who spoke the truth. We need people like Paul who will, who will expose the false heretics. And like I said, when I expose, I make sure I get my facts straight. I make sure that I listen to everything and I, and I make sure that everything that I say is 100% correct. Because I don't want to slander somebody else's name. So when you see me posting about a pastor or preacher or somebody that's a heretic, please understand that I did my research. And like I said, I don't do this because I... You think I enjoy exposing false teachers, preachers, pastors, evangelists? You think I enjoy it? It's not fun because then you have... Christ, the Christians looking at you like you're a divider. You have them thinking that you're just a, uh, you're jealous of somebody else's success. That you're jealous of what they're doing. I'm not jealous of no one, everyone. I am zealous for the Lord's words. I have zeal for the Lord's words. When I see or I hear the Lord's words butchered and twisted for anyone's benefit, that's what angers me, and I have to speak out. So I hope that you guys also become strong. I hope you begin to speak out. Again, like 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says, Be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Act like men. Don't cower. Don't be little sissies. Stand strong. Act like men. Be, be tough. You know, because remember, we serve and worship an awesome Mighty God Almighty Yahweh. And again, like I said before, the enemy is raising up people to be bold. He's raising up his people to be bold, to be liars, to be slanderers and all these things. And yet we as a Christianity, we as Christianity, we as Christians, we are cowering while the world is getting stronger. Brothers and sisters, we need more people to speak the truth. Use your Facebook. It's the greatest platform for anybody. Men or women. Use your Facebook to spread the truth. Use your Facebook to speak the truth and to share the truth. Like my last video I said, too many of us Christians, we are still involved with the world. We share nasty videos. We share videos with nasty jokes. We share videos of beer drinking, of drunkenness, of... of stupid things and we as Christians should not be sharing these things we should be sharing wholesome things we should be sharing things that will uplift the person that will help the person repent if you notice I share you know stuff from Paul Washer I share stuff from Charles Spurgeon I share stuff from John MacArthur I share anything that has to do with wholesome preaching and all that I will share it and we must make, we, we have to learn to use our better judgment, brothers and sisters.
because I see professing Christians share stupid things, and I'm th and when I see it, when I'm scrolling through Facebook, I'm like, did this person not think twice of what he was going to share or she shares? I think did they not think twice of what they were going to share? Did this slip their better judgment? If you ever catch me sharing stump, something that's not wholesome, something that, that is clean, godly stuff, I want you guys to rebuke me in public. I want you to. I'm telling you guys right now. If I ever share something stupid on my profile, I want you guys to rebuke me in public. Because if I'm sharing it publicly, I deserve to be rebuked and corrected publicly. So that's my 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 begging of you guys. I want you to rebuke me public, publicly and correct me publicly. Okay? That's what I'm going to tell you guys. If you ever catch me doing something stupid on Facebook, sharing something stupid on Facebook, let me know. Rebuke me publicly. I, I dare you to. Because yes, we're all going to mess up in our judgment, but we have to repent of it. Okay? So yes, guys, that's my challenge to you. If you see me sharing something that's not wholesome, something that doesn't uh, build up the kingdom of God. I want you to rebuke me publicly, okay? I thank you guys for watching again. I love you guys. Um, I may try to come back with the Thursday lesson. I think I'm going to go back to Thursday this week. I don't know. It just depends on what the Lord leads me to. I might just take the week off. Um, but thank you guys for watching. God bless you. I love you guys and the Lord. Keep me in prayers. If you guys have any prayer requests, you can message me or just comment below. And I'm going to ask that you guys please join me in prayers. Um, you know, just asking the Lord for, you know, to help send out workers for the kingdom. We need to be praying to God, asking God, asking God to send out more workers for his kingdom. We need more workers. We need more bold people. So let's pray. Let's pray together asking God for more bold people to stand up for the Lord. Amen. Thank you guys for watching. God bless you guys.